Hey everyone, James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors and one of the new products that I've been experimenting with this year is the Ice Defense from Cold Nation. If you've been watching our shows, you've undoubtedly noticed that there's a little blue box and a blue tube hanging from my flasher. And what that product is intended to do is to help keep ice holes from freezing over. Uh, I spent a lot of time fishing outside of the ice house, so it's something that I really wanted to give a try. And I've received a lot of questions about, well, how does it work at 10 degrees? Or how does it work at zero? And honestly, um, I've been out on the ice fishing. I haven't been doing any product tests, but that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna just keep things pretty similar to the way I fish. I'm gonna punch a couple of holes. I'm gonna put an ice defense in one unit. I'm gonna leave the hole next to it uh, just open. Uh, I'm not going to scoop all the ice shavings out because that's the way I fish. I don't carry a scoop. I'm just going to clean it as well as I can with the auger. And uh, we're going to put a thermometer in the frame with a digital counter and we're going to see how the product fares. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a side by side with this product and an air bubbler. Some guys have said that an air bubbler will do pretty much the same thing. So we're going to put it to the test and see how it turns out. All right, so the way this works, where the ice defense is set up to work is there's a little control box over here with a dial on it. Uh, you can turn it on or off or select any power setting from on and off. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn her on, crank her up, and see how well this will keep ice out of the hole. And the principle it works on is there's warmer water further down in the hole. So it's lifting that warmer water and distributing it up near the top uh, to melt off that ice. So we've got that in place right now. You can see that the water's disturbed. It's moving around. There's a little slush left in the hole. We'll see what it does to that. We're gonna start the timer. Get it somewhere where we can see it. I would say that this hole here probably got a little bit less slush than this one, but just to make sure, there, there's some extra. All right, let's let it run. So that was 30 minutes, uh, just from watching it. Uh, it took about 14, maybe 15 minutes for the ice defense to just completely chew up or melt all the ice that was in this hole. And if you remember at the start, I kind of threw some extra in there. So it does a really good job of, uh, if you uh, accidentally kick a bunch of slush in there, it's gonna clean it up. Uh, on this side, well, that'll tell you what you need to know. Uh, not the greatest, of course, it's cold. I think the uh, temperature here stayed right in that seven, to eight degree range, not a lot of wind today, not a lot of blowing snow. I would think that uh, one scenario where, uh, you know, any type of tool that's gonna try to use uh, uh, the warmth of the water uh, to keep it open uh, would be blowing snow. Obviously, if the snow is just blowing into the hole, that's gonna be an issue, but the ice defense unit is working so well, it's actually starting to undercut the edge here where the water volume is coming out of the tube. So pretty impressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a second test. I'm going to clean out this hole here, get the slush out of it, and we're going to drop an air stone in it. And I've never uh, used this before, so we're going to check it out, but uh, we're going to see how that air stone with an, you know, an air pump compares to the ice defense unit. And what I'll do is I'll throw a similar amount of slush back in each hole, reset the timer, and see what happens. All right, so here's what we've got. Uh, fresh batteries in an aerator that would be used in a minnow bucket. I've got a little uh, weight there clipped onto the transducer cable, just holding that air stone down in the water. I wanna try to make it as you know, fair a comparison as possible. And uh, I pretty logical that if that air stone's right at the surface, 
it's not going to work really well. So we're going to weight that down there. The distance uh, into the water is very similar between these two. So I'm going to drop it in and turn it on. Yeah, you can see the, the air coming out of it. I'm going to start this. All right, and we're going to challenge it a little bit. How about a one handful for the uh, air stone and two and a half for that one. And definitely more in the ice defense. We'll just see how it does. Let it buck for another 30 minutes and we'll come back. Shut them both down here. So what conclusions am I gonna offer here? Um, ice defense chewed up the slush that was in there, did a pretty good job with that. Um, doesn't look like the air stone will actually chew up much ice in the hole. Uh, it was pushing ice formation off of the side, so wherever the bubbles were coming up, uh, there wasn't ice forming there, but definitely doesn't do anywhere near as good a job as the ice defense unit. Uh, one of the other advantages, things that I like about the ice defense is you can just run it right off of uh, the, the marking unit, just plug it in and go. You know, if you're gonna run a bubbler like this, you're gonna wanna try to find the next, uh, a different power source because D batteries are not cheap. And uh, on this particular bubble, bubbler, I'll get about a day and a half or two days of runtime. So the D batteries will eventually become kind of cost prohibitive, but uh, temperature never got above uh, 10 degrees. I think we're still hovering right about nine. That's pretty cold. Um, I'm comfortable saying that if you left the ice defense in that hole and kept power to it, it would keep it from icing over pretty much indefinitely. So uh, it was a nice little test. Uh, certainly not the, uh, the end all beat all, cover all, all scenarios. I've never experimented with the air stone before, so there might be you know, slightly better ways to go about using it. But overall, uh, it's a pretty cool technology. Uh, not a lot of weight and a very efficient little motor in there. Uh, the manufacturer says that off a nine amp uh, hour battery, you know, the kind that you'll find in most fish finders, that unit will run for about three days. So a lot of runtime. So that's it. Um, I'll look for more opportunities to kind of experiment and learn more uh, about how this works. But uh, so far, pretty impressed.